Hello, hello, friends. So today what we're going to do is something really cool. What we're going to do is uh, build an algorithm that counts all the unique values in an array, but we're going to do it in two separate ways. One way is going to be in the multiple, using the multiple pointer approach for writing the algorithm. The second way is building out an object and just counting the unique keys within that uh, object. So it's good little stuff. So let's talk about the multiple pointer approach first. So let's say that we have this array and we're going to assume that the array is sorted. Um, if your array isn't sorted, it would just be real easy to sort it because JavaScript has some built in stuff. So let's say R, let R equal 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's not sorted, right? So all you got to do is go r.sort, and boom, it sorts the array for you. Some built-in stuff, which is pretty cool, but for this example, we're going to just assume that the array is sorted. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then a bunch of 5s after it. So this should have 5 unique values in it. Um, you don't want to count the multiples of one value, you just want to count the unique value. So what would be a good multiple pointer approach to come at that? So let's say that we have two pointers. We have an i. Uh, right here, and uh, why can't I get that to line up? Got an I there, and then you start off with a J here, right? So what we do is compare these two, compare I and J. If they are not equal, we can increment J and we'll increment I. These are not equal, we'll increment J and increment I again. These are not equal, so we'll increment J and we'll increment I. These are not equal, so we'll increment i, and we'll increment j. These are equal. So since these are equal, i will stay where it is, and we'll increment j. These are equal. We'll increment, uh, shoot. We'll, uh, ah, come on, man. I'll call you back, mom. Uh, we'll increment i, increment j. Threw me off. <laughs> Let's see. So we just keep incrementing j and checking it to i. And then we increment j again. And now we're at the end of the array with j. And these are, are our unique values. So let's say that we had a 6 right here. Then we would keep incrementing j. Now we're at the end of the array. And j and i are different. So we'll increment i. And then we'll equal where i is to be where j is, 6. right? So then that's the way the algorithm works, and we want to return this portion of the array. We don't even want to mess with any of this because we know all of our unique values are right here. So how would we go about building that out? Let's take a look. Function, unique values, seems like a good name. And we'll feed it in array. So let i equal 0, because that's where we're going to start. And then we'll start the J, or we'll start a loop with the J. So we'll go let J equal 1, right? And then as long as J is less than r.length, we'll increment J by 1 each time. Cool, cool. So we'll go if r at i is not equal to r at J, like we said, what we want to do is want to increment i. And then we want to set r and i to be equal to r and j. Now, you don't even need an else statement here because if it's if it's if it doesn't fit those conditions of this of this conditional right here, we just want to let j increment. And it's going to increment on its own, so you don't have to do anything. The only thing you have to do is at the bottom. Let's say that i is right here. You have to return i plus one. Because let's say that these are all the unique values. We would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But i would only be at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 because it's on a 0 index when indexing in an array. So you just return uh, i plus 1. Right? And there's an edge case here that we're going to get to. So this should return 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 unique values. This should. So we'll go unique, we'll call it unique values at R. Oh shoot, we gotta wrap that in a console log. So console.log. And then we take this. Um, 
apple X, apple B. All right, so there we're good. Let's go here, let's run it. What was it? No, what was that in the file? Count, count unique values. Six unique values it gives us. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's right. So let's say we had several more sixes right here and then a seven, 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 seven. Let's just say that. So now it should get a seven unique values. Seven, it's working. Now, the edge case is, what if someone passes in an empty array? This should return zero, but as you'll see, it will return one because we're doing i plus one here. And if we initialize i at zero, it's gonna be plus one. So you can short circuit it here. You can just write a conditional. So like if r dot uh, length is less than one, uh, we'll just return uh, zero, return zero. And then we won't even run the rest of the code. So cool, that works, that takes care of the edge case. So that's the way to do it in the, that's a way to do it in the multiple pointers kind of way. So let's do something to where we like actually build an object out of the array. So we'll call this one unique value singular so we don't have naming uh, conflicts and we'll pass in an array for that one. So what we want to do here is the first thing we want to do, what well, basically let me explain what's going on here. So what we're going to do is we'll take the array and uh, well, we raise up here and let's populate it. One, two, three, four, five, 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 six, 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 seven, seven, seven. So it has seven unique values in it. So what we want to do is go through the array and we want to take the array and build an object out of it with uh, key, the keys being uh, the indices, uh, the keys being the elements in the array and the values being the amount of times that they that they occur in the array. So Let's say key, 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 and then its values will be here. This will be a key, and that will be a key. So we'll have the same, we should end up with the same seven, right? So how do you build an object? So let's just declare it first. We'll call it uh, val obj for value object. We'll equal it as an empty object starting out. And then, uh, pretty straightforward, we can just go for, and we'll use the uh, ES6 syntax for this one. We'll go for let num, uh, it's an array, so for objects, if you're iterating through, it's gonna be in, for arrays, it's gonna be of, so let num of r, that will give us all the elements, and we'll go val obj, that object, at num, it's going to equal val obj at num plus one, or we're going to initialize it to one. Cool. So now that we have our object built, the only thing that we need to do is go return object dot keys at val obj dot length. And this should work. We'll go unique value at our shoot we've got a console log console dot log grab that get that apple x apple b all right so uh let's actually stub out this code for right now stub that out go bottom looks good let's see if we made any mistakes Seven, okay, cool, so that's working. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven unique values. So with this one, you don't have to write a short circuit. So if you if someone passes in an empty array, it's just gonna return zero on its own. Uh, so that's two different ways to solve the same problem. Um, it's, I would probably go with, you know, if I'm pressed on this and someone asks me to do it for them, I would probably do it the first way I would do it is probably using multiple pointers. And then I would be like, well, if you wanted to just build an object, you could also do that as well. Because the difference is in this one, you're actually mute, you're actually changing the array that you're passed in. And this one you're not, you're just building an object out of the array. But they both work pretty well. Uh, so, um, and it's two ways to do the same problem, which is always good. So I hope you enjoyed it. Take it easy.